<laughs> Hi, Ryan. Super tough scrap uh, at Bellator. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. First round, I thought, what's going on here? Why is Ryan stopping? He must have got hurt here. I thought the fight was about to end there. Again, once again, you proved me wrong. Talk about the performance. Yeah, man, you know, it was, it was exciting. Uh, you know, I went in there against a tough opponent, Luis Santos, you know, 15-7 record. Um, you know, I had to be prepared. I went in there and gave him my all. He did catch me with a nice kick. I went off my glove, hit me in the head, but, you know, it didn't really hurt me. Um, you know, I just didn't want to get into the big-time scramble on the ground where I leave something open to a black belt, GJ, BJJ guy like himself. So, you know, I wasn't uh, I wasn't really hurt at all. Um, you know, I was just playing the game. I could feel him gassing out every time he was trying to punch me. So, uh, you know, I just set that up for me in the second round. Were you waiting for the hooks to go in on both sides? Um, no, he wasn't really putting the hooks in. So if, if, if he were to put a hook in, then I would obviously have to get up and scramble. But he was more sitting there trying to pick shots and stuff, which weren't doing any damage to me. So, uh, uh, yeah, actually, it did surprise me. But, you know, I kind of knew that he was more, he liked to stand up. And, uh, you know, through our whole camp, too, a lot of the guys were saying, you know, his jiu-jitsu is, is, he is a black belt, but it was kind of su success. No, I just meant suspect. There we go. I had to get my boy over there to <laughs> yell that out for me. <laughs> as long as it's not Eamon Zahabi, we're okay, right? No, if it's Eamon Zahabi, it's always okay. If it's Eamon Zahabi, we all know the history with the Zahabi brothers. If they try and crash another interview of mine, it's over. <laughs> for who, you? Both of them. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> talk about the finish in the, in the second round because, I mean, actually, no, let's talk about going to the corner after the first round because you talked about, you know, your, your guy's telling you to pick up the pace. Let's do this. Was there a part of you that said, man, I'm about to lose this fight, even though it's the first round. We got to do this. Talk about the corner and how they got you to get back to where you need to be. Yeah, no, I never thought in my head at all that I was, you know, I'm going to lose this fight. Uh, you know, I know, I know I lost the first round, but, you know, with me, it's, you know, we, it's a three-round fight. And, you know, you got to do a lot to stop me. And, uh, you know, I can stop you at any moment of the fight. You know, I get that chance and I'm going to do it. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I think I was feeling him out a little bit too much in the first round just because he was a southpaw. So I was trying to get my rhythm. And, you know, it was kind of different for me. Even though I train with southpaws in the gym, fight night, it's totally different when you've got a natural southpaw who's been fighting for that many years. So, um, you know, I played the game, came out in the second round. I'm like, hey, I'm going to push the pace a little bit harder on him, see what happens. Got him to back up. Got him in the clinch. He wasn't as strong as I thought he was, and uh, I hit him with a nice knee in the stomach, and I felt him kind of, it, it hurt him, and then his knee was placed at the right, his head was placed at the right spot. I hit it, went limp. Well, when you talk about the knees that were taking place to, to end that round, what, what happened is that everyone around me, when the knees were being thrown, because you, you, you happened to knock them down right in front of us, it didn't look like they were doing much damage until he folded. Talk about the setup, because I think it was two knees that set up the final one? Yeah, I set up two knees. Um, we were in the clinch, and I hit him one knee in the stomach, and the second one I hit him, and it kind of shocked him, and then his head was placed a little bit too much onto the left, and I just threw that knee up. I knew I was going to catch him, and went down, and you know me, I ain't stopping until the ref pulls me off. And, and you might not be stopping your Bellator career anytime soon because uh, Bjorn Revney, I spoke to him after the press conference, specifically said, hey, you know what, this wasn't a welterweight fight to get him into the tournament, but it's going to be hard for you not to get into the next season tournament. What do you have to say to that? Yeah, you know, I'm just looking to come out, put on exciting shows every time I step in that cage for Bellator. And, uh, you know, if they want me in the Bellator tournament next, you know, I'll be willing to do that. If they want me to fight another fight, I'm willing to do that too, you know. This is what I do to feed my family, and fighting's what I love to do. Talk about the transition over to TriStar uh, and what that camp uh, means to you, only because I've seen way too many guys go there, and the first thing they tell me afterwards is, it's like a bunch of sharks in there. Usually, I'm the alpha male at the school. You go there, you're not the alpha male. Talk about training there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, 20 fights, I came up, and I was alpha male at every gym that I trained at, um, you know. Moving over to TriStar, there really is no alpha male there, you know. Everybody is on a different level, different stylistic, and day in and day out, it's a grind, you know. Uh, sparring day, Saturday, you matched up with three different guys every every different Saturday and every different round. You know, you got one guy come in with one style, the next guy comes brings in a whole different style, so you got to be ready for everything. And, uh, you know, training with all the guys there has stepped my game up. You ever pick at the whiteboard before Faraz is done writing on it? Sometimes, you know, everybody tries to do that little walk by and, you know, give that little look. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because everybody at the gym is good. So it don't matter who you're matched up with. You're going to be matched up with somebody good. Full disclosure, uh, everyone knows that Sean Pearson's a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for a very long time. Do I get to pay you any extra money to throw a couple harder punches or kicks when you're sparring with him? <laughs> 
No, I'm pretty sure we already throw hard punches and kicks at each other all the time. So. What, what about the Zahabi brothers? Can I give you some extra money to actually hit, like hurt them, give them some black eyes? Like, like you know, you got to cut up your face here. Come on, like, extra cash. Can I pay you? It's hard to do that against the master. You know, like. Yeah, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, you know, even though uh, little little Eamon there is only 135 pounds, uh, he whoops guys who are about 250, 230. I've seen it real life. <laughs> the corruption, Zahabi brothers, Eamon and Faraz, the corruption will not stop. I will get Ryan Ford on my side. I've got Pearson infiltrating. It will happen soon. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you very much for having me. There you have it, Ryan Ford. You may be seeing him in next season's Bellator Welterweight Tournament.